是。<laughs> wow! Everybody is so excited, man. This is awesome. The official Glory Kickboxing Podcast. I'm Todd Grisham. Joseph Baltolini is here. We'll bring in a very special guest coming up in just in a few minutes. But let's talk first about the biggest fighting news in the world this week. You were on the Joe Rogan Experience. That's a huge news, man. It was probably one of my bucket list things that I got to check off. I was a little scared, man. I walked into his room and I just saw, I kept seeing his room because I would listen to his podcast a lot. So it was pretty cool to be in that room and to, to be able to talk to uh, someone. And we talked for like two hours and 50 minutes. I don't think I've ever talked to anyone that long in my life. <laughs> but it was God. cool, man. We got to talk kickboxing. We got to hype up this LA show, which is going to be wicked. And the energy here is awesome. And he's going to be at the show as well. So it's going to be a lot of energy at the show. He man. loves you, man. Yeah, why he was like he? he was just like smiling ear to ear the whole time. He's just in love with you. How did that feel? Did you get comfortable? Man. At one point, he even goes, "Joe, man, I gotta get off your." Sorry, I don't know if I can say that there, but he's like, yeah, "Get, get off, off your what? nuts, man!" He's like, "I gotta get off your nuts," <laughs> and he's going. He was like, "Man, it's like, yeah, it was good. It was a good man. My Instagram's blowing up. You got like three thousand new followers, right? Oh, more than that now. Really? I got like five thousand just off of that already. Man, I always thought you were a hack. Oh, but I no. guess I guess you were pretty good. Everyone man. was saying, like, look at this smart little intelligent guy over Gosh, there. Man. My favorite comment still though, one guy was just so impressed with how smooth my skin looked on TV. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's baby, man. Yeah, it's baby like, soft. Why don't you grow a beard? I'm trying. I've been you trying for thirty one years. You can't do it. Like yeah. no hair comes out. Nothing comes out. I got like a few little peach fuzz little things <laughs> hanging, but Nothing you would, you would make a beautiful transvestite. That's very nice of you. You know what I mean? I'm, tell, I'm just saying for the record. And what do you look like? <laughs> no, I said you would if you wanted oh, to be. Don't be jealous, man. What? You looks like you're breaking out a little bit. I am, man. I'm getting nervous for this podcast. I was on UFC for the first time this past week. Yeah, you look good, man. I like yeah? that. You like my haircut? A little too much? I, there's a lot of things I'm trying to get you to change. Those tight jeans you're wearing, that's a good <laughs> you step. You like these, don't you? Yeah, but no, I mean, you look good. I usually like to wear my Wranglers, but, you know, you talked me into to getting some, or some those new jeans. standard Levi yeah. one, Levi's ones? It went good. The show was good. It was the UFC pre, uh, the weigh-in show, the pre-fight show, and the post-fight show. And you were with Florian and Woodley. Correct. I was the great champion of the world. Those guys were awesome. They helped me out. They were great. Good sense of humor. You know, I like to bust on guys a little bit. They took it for stride and dished it back out. It was fun, and I'll be uh, I'll be going to Denver next week for the next uh, UFC fight card, and I will be doing the same thing. So I'll be in Denver uh, to a weekend from this weekend. So it'll be next weekend is what I'm trying to say, Joe. That's all right. Yeah. So. Um, is there talks about you with play-by-play -play as well? Maybe. I might be doing something in uh, February yet to be determined, but it looks like I'll be doing some play-by-play -play, uh, for the Halifax card with um, Brian Stan. So... Things are good, man, but we're talking about glory this week. Okay. So let's focus in on two world title fights. But the first world title fight isn't going down as planned. What the hell happened to Ruben Van Roosmal? That was crazy. So in L.A., they have like a, like the UFC is doing now. They kind of get in before and they start to um, have like a pre-weigh-in. So they came in this morning and they weighed in. And it was a little small room here where they were weighing in. And I was just standing outside and all of a sudden I see... You know, Robin's storming out, his dad's freaking out, like his team is kind of like, this fight is off, and that's kind of all I really heard, man. Did you get any more news? All I heard is now that if uh, the title has been uh, declared vacated, so if Roos Mullen wins, then he will get to challenge for the belt for his next fight. Glory's guaranteed him a future title shot in his next fight if he wins. However, he cannot win the title. He cannot win the title Embry. against Matt Embry. However, if Embry wins... He will be world champion. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> on what? On what? Like, what do you what think? Like, how does that happen? Like, uh, you, I've never had to cut weight before. As you can see right now, I didn't cut weight for this week because I'm a fat ass. Okay. What I'm trying to tell you is, in my brain, when you step on a scale and you're 0.8 over, I've seen it boxing a hundred times, they give you maybe an hour or whatever it is to go lose That's it. That's how it usually is. And most guys lose it. He didn't. I don't know if he didn't want to, if he didn't feel he could, if he was exhausted, if he was dehydrated to a point where he thought he might do some serious physical harm to himself. I don't know. I can't judge him, but it's a world title fight. You do what you got to do. That's the way I look at it, to be honest. If you're 0.8 of a pound and you're the world champion, you got to make weight. Yeah. Well, no matter he, what it is, man, you got to make weight. He dropped down to this weight to win the title, so he doesn't normally fight uh, as a featherweight. But here he is. Yeah, well, I talked to him a few times though, and he seems to be 
uh, pretty comfortable at this weight. I don't know. I think what it was with him and his team talking to his, you know, his dad came and talked a little bit. The scale was moving a little bit. So at one point he weighed in on the scale and he was right on weight. And then they moved the scale and then he ended up taking off his pants or his underwear at that point or whatever. And the scale you, showed something heavier. Did you help him do that? Or? No, no. Unfortunately not. <laughs> That's usually not my job around Okay, here. I don't know what, what your job is. But outside usually I'm calling flights. That's the <laughs> oh, last yeah, time I checked. It. That's what they're hiring. Okay, well, either way, he didn't make weight. There's some controversy floating around backstage. But we'll see what happens. Bottom line, he is no longer the featherweight champion of the world. Let's talk about a man that also can win a world title Friday night. He is the last style bender and he's a guest on our show joe hey, hype him in man. welcome him in ladies there and gentlemen it's real adesanya oh, I'm glad I'm here. what's up right. what's up guys hey man uh before we get into talking about you and i know you love to talk about you sometimes yeah not all the time if you're going for a world title today and you would weigh in 0.8 over what would you I'd get done? back in there there's no option i'd get back in there i've um i've had I never miss weight ever, but if I've had teammates that happen to them and my coach just be like, yep, let's go get it done. Whatever you have to do, even if you have to put a sweatsuit on back in a hotel, that's what he did. My teammate that didn't make weight, and it was, I think, point two, but the Chinese were like, no, 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 you must. You must make weight. And yeah, go back in there and you have to do what you have to do. Sweats, everything, anything, you know? Like, I mean, again, both <clears throat> of us have fought a lot. I think one of the most frustrating things is you bring your own scale and you, you might make weight on your own scale, but then when you go to the official scale, it's a totally different number and it stresses you out. So I don't know. What could they do? They, they got fucked us. up. I think the commission should have had the, I mean, the official scale available to everyone from yesterday night. So you can check yourself and see what you weigh on the official scale. So when you go cut weight, you can compare that to whatever the, you know, at the gym or whatever, what, what, what the weight, what the weight is there. And then see if it's accurate. If it's not then you know at least, okay, this is what I have to give so I can make sure I'm right on the official scale. But they never made that available to anyone. Even this morning, they never made it available to anyone. So we went to the gym this morning, and at the gym, 24-Hour Fitness, we made sure we had we used two separate scales to make sure we were on weight. So that way, okay, this says we're on, this says we're on, we must be on. Two two scales can't be both wrong at a, you know, at a gym. So, I mean, if I was me, I'd, there's no option. For a world title, there's no fucking option, you know. You have to get in there and get it done. Would you cut your genitalia off? I cut my balls off to make that way. Just, I mean, just to make shit happen. Are serious, Joe? Oh, well, for sure, he's got that I can tuck it in. I can, I can do the whole Caitlyn Jenner you know, or whatever. <laughs> I just suck it up and then make sure I make that way. Hey, you're, you're the last style bender. Mm -hmm. Some people who haven't seen you fight are like, what, what, what is that? Yeah. Explain it if you can. Okay, so if you know, um, there's, I'm, I'm like 12 on the inside sometimes. I love anime. And there's a series called The Avatar. And it's this kid yeah, called Aang. And he um, is the last of his kind. The Eb, uh, he's uh, There's four great nations. The Fire Nation, Water, Earth, and Air Nation. And there's a great war. The Fire Nation killed off all the airbenders. And he was the last one. So he's also the last um, avatar who can kind of save the world. So his power, I guess, is to master all four elements. So he can realize his destiny as the avatar. So the way I feel when I was coming up, I kind of felt like it just related to me. And watching the show, there's a lot of nuances on it. I felt like it's my destiny. From fight number four, like Ali said, I'm the greatest. I said it before I knew I was. I don't know why. I don't know. I just felt like, man, I think I could be the best at this. So I felt like it was my destiny to, to become the avatar. So I have to master all four main elements of martial arts so I can prove to everyone that I am the avatar. I mean, I, I could have taken the easy route and just be like, yo, I'm just going to stick the kickboxing, make shitload of money, and I don't have to worry about all these, you know, ground or wrestlers or whatever, but... I don't know if it's my ego or just me as a person. I just never want to feel vulnerable in any situation at all. So I want to make sure I have all bases covered. Like if I'm in any situation, you can't fuck with me. You yeah, and you I mean? can see that with your fighting, man. Like at one point, you're kind of fighting on the outside. And then you're using your box. And then you switch stances. And then all of a sudden, you're going head to head. And then you back up and you start throwing spinning shit all the time. Style bending, man, one-on-one. -on -one, you know? Yeah, it and looks that's, good, man. Yeah. I think that's what – I think you have a big following. And, mm -hmm. you know, even on the Joe Rogan podcast – like, I come back, and I'm on looking on my Twitter, and everyone's like, man, it's wicked. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm with the style bender, and now Definitely. I'm following you. So, I mean, you got a lot of good hype around your style I appreciate and it, your you know? energy. And yeah, so everyone that. likes, you know, I mean, you know, when they build you up, I love it. And I, I think they can, people can kind of see when you're real, when, 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 you know, when you know what you're doing, when you're fighting. So, it's just mixing it up, and that's what gets people flustered. Like, I'm going to fight Jason Wilness, but I've said it, you know, I've fought guys like him many times. I fought 20 30 guys like him, same style. 
but he's never fought anyone like me. And he's, I mean, he had a close for me with Artem, but Artem doesn't fight like me. Artem's like, tap, 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 hold, and goes to the referee. What? I'm not holding. I'm not holding. What are you doing? And then tap, 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 hold. So it's a good start to shut him down, but I, I just, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not my cup of tea. And I don't fight boring either. I fight smart, but my fights have never been boring. So you, you know, you don't have to be a to be exciting. You just have to fight calculated. You know. Yeah, you made a comment about like Dutch kickboxing, and yeah. it was kind of like that they rely on straightforward pressure. The and basic. That they rely on being tough, and mm -hmm. they rely on you know um, strong defense and like a strong man competition. Like a juggernaut. You know what I mean? Like they come forward, and I'm not not all Dutch kickboxers are like that, but the majority of the ones I've seen, that's how they fight, and it works well if you don't know how to deal with that kind of style. But me and my coaches have dealt with it many, you know, many many times. So you just have to use, you know, what you can. And the, the good thing is also if I wanted to, like you saw in my last fight against um, what's his fucking name? I call him Chris Humphreys. I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Usuri, yeah. Usuri, yeah. So um, yeah, he's like a Chris Humphreys bootleg. But um, yeah, he's uh, I made an audible in that. Yeah, he does. You look at him; he's like a secondhand Chris Humphreys. But um, in 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 the back room before the fight came through, before we went out for the fight, we made an audible and decided now we're gonna press him forward because the first time I fought him, we you know we played our game, beat him, but we just didn't want the judges to have that. Oh, okay, he's moving backwards a lot, moving side to side. He's not really bringing the fight. It's like nah, fuck, we're bringing the fight. But I thought you know what, I'm gonna press him, and I did that and beat him at his own style. So I can do what they can do, but they can't do what I can do. Yeah, but you guys had some beef and tension in that fight, wasn't there? Uh, that was, that one, he, out, I humbled him in the first won. fight because uh, we fought in China. But before that, backstage, he was all like at the hotel from the get-go. He like, he'll walk past me in the hotel and be like, you better sleep well tomorrow, bro. Because you, oh, you're going to sleep well. You're going to sleep good. I'm like, what the fuck? Shut up. And I don't even have like, you know, I don't, I have no ill will towards anyone. But him, leading up to that fight, I think he got me, he got me like riled up maybe. I I'm still not sure. I have to, you know, evaluate how I feel. But the second time in Denver, he he didn't say shit in the elevator. He just looked at his phone, didn't say shit. You know, just ignored me the whole time. And I'm like, cool, be that way. I got a question for you. What's up? Could you beat Bruce Lee? Fuck yeah. Oh, I mean, respect. I love Bruce Lee. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> with all due respect. Yeah, with all due respect, I whoop his ass. He's about he weighed about 165 pounds. That's oh, biggest. Just fling him around. He's good. He's fast, but. Yeah, I can beat him. Todd has this thing where he loves comparing. He loves asking fighters mm -hmm. if they can beat someone else. I mean, he Bruce, asked me that's two what podcasts he, ago. That's he what this whole sport is about. Can this yeah, guy beat this, this guy? guy right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He asked me if uh, I think you we're doing you commentary. Yeah. We're doing commentary, and he asked me, we're going to be doing it with Alistair Overeem. I was like, cool. He's like, you think you can knock out Alistair Overeem? Well, who would win if you fought Alistair Overeem? <laughs> what was my answer? Yeah. Damn right I'll beat Alistair Overeem, man. Right. Would you beat Alistair Overeem? I'll fuck him up. Yeah. I mean, I've been to... I fought... Heavyweight tournaments. I mean, I I love Alistair and his style as well. But if we had to fight, it's just yeah, I could can you, beat. Could you beat Joe? Mm, he doesn't fight anymore. But I mean, <laughs> 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 see what he does. He doesn't fight see what anymore. He does? Okay, no, you, you know what? Who would win out of you and Joe? Let me Joe see. Joe would win. Exactly. Oh, baby, at least he's on to He's hundred. A thousand times out of a thousand. Go. Yeah. There we go. So that's the thing. I'm like at ground zero. There's yeah. no any question you ask me. It's like no, of course I lose. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> He's it's that fun. kind of instigator. And then he asked me and he, steps back and just goes grab. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh yeah, he loves watch, it. Then he watch. asked you. He did commentary with Brian Stan, and then all of a sudden he's like, "You and Brian Stan got into a fight in a garage." What? <laughs> Adam, yeah, he asked me if me oh. and Brian Stan got into <laughs> yes, a fight yes. in a garage. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, "Well, can I use weapons?" That's and a fair yeah. question. Of course. Is there a bat lying around in the garage? Yeah, that's a fair <laughs> question. Is there some you know, kerosene something? I love that. Stuff, man. I, nah, I don't just, be the instigator. Just, just, uh, you know, just let it happen. Yeah, if it okay. happens, it happens. All right. So you're fighting Jason Wilders for the title. Mm -hmm. Van Roosman, even though he missed weight, will still fight Matt Embry. What do you think about that matchup? I think, well, now with this, I just heard about this news. So um, I don't know what his state of mind is. And that's going to play a big factor because I can I can imagine the the embarrassment, the you know losing your title and all that stuff that goes with it. So And also he didn't want to jump back on the scale and cut. I think 0 0.8 pounds, so he must have been really dehydrated, and he looked like he was on death's door a little bit. But mm, I think Matt's gonna get confident off that, you know, and see how we how he carries himself. But Harbin's a rubber's a beast, man. I mean, even at that the last one in Denver, he looked like he was a killer um, against um, the uh, Varga. Varga, yeah, he like he never knocked down him. before Varga. Yeah, and exactly, and he beasted him like he didn't give him a chance, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, it depends how. Matt can capitalize on this big time, big time. He just has to show up and do what he does. But 
if if Robin lets this defeat him mentally, you know, he might he might lose his fight. He said beast to them. Like that phrase. I, like mm, I don't like best. Of, best is cool, but that's like a posh way of saying beast that. mode on him, man. Yeah. I guess that assumes like a guy runs through you so fast that you don't get to land a punch. Nah. It's like, you just beast. Like the yeah, Ronda Rousey fight. She got beasted it. Yeah, by, there we go. That was beasting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's crazy beast. too because these two title fights kind of, to me, are like the same kind of matchups. You know, it's like, you have the pressure Dutch fighter against mm-hmm. more of a movement style fighter. And it's, it's what, what makes this fight exciting for me is on paper, I remember we talked about this at our pre-fight interview, mm-hmm. to beat him uh, a pressure fighter, you beat him with movement and angles, mm-hmm. which is your style. Now, one of my as, styles. Well, many of one of yeah. your style. Yeah. <laughs> ways, I like that. And then, uh, but the way to beat you is a pressure fighter. Maybe. 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 But on paper, I'm talking yeah, textbook. Textbook. Paper, yeah, take right? yeah, definitely. So that's what makes it interesting to yeah. me. Because a lot of times if you put two guys who fight very similar, if you fought a movement, you know, another style bender, which mm-hmm. if that even exists. Simon Marcus mm-hmm. close to him? Nah, fuck out of here. I no think way. Simon doesn't move as much as his nah, fuck no. Uh, who's the closest then? He's not the closest. Who everyone keeps say? saying everyone keeps saying Artem, so I want that fight, but Artem's Body like top? Huh? No. Bite top eleven. Bite top. Artem. Eleven, Artem eleven. So everyone says that, but right now I haven't seen him. He's just doing modeling shit on Instagram, like a Instagram model, you know. But I mean, if he wants to fight, he can get it. Definite. Joe would love to be an Instagram model. Mm. You jealous about that? Uh, pretty Joe's pretty man. Look at him. Uh, like you were saying, baby guys... face. We're in the same boat, man. Yes, like it's been I'm... 27 years. Look at this chin. Yeah. That's, oh, that's I got the fuzz, man. Get. Straight up. That's one. Dude, than this I is what I've grown in 27 I years. You looked a lot better with your head shape. Did I? Bro, yeah. I like this, man. You look meaner. I'm like right now. I don't want to be mean. I like pretty. Yeah. I'm too no, pretty, man. So I got the baby you soft skin. Yeah, definite, girlfriend? man. Yeah, she's coming through as well. Whole family's right. coming through. I allowed them for this fight because this is a uh, one that they like. No, we have to come. I was like, all right, fine. Before you had a girlfriend, how yeah. what was it like being a champion, walk around? Oh, I, you know, guy, I, had my, I had my, I had my life. I had the the whole life. The whole life was fun. Yeah, <laughs> I like if you do something great in Thailand, are you a superstar when you walk on the yeah. streets? Oh, uh, not even Thailand. I because I live in New Zealand main, mainly, but Thailand, especially Phuket. If you ever been, woo, Phuket is the shit. I haven't saying, been, man. man. Bro, you gotta go. You gotta go, been. bro. I Phuket. Crazy. Yeah, go Tiger. I mean, we can set you up. It's bad, yeah. man. It's, it's lovely. You can I go. Mean, PP Island, you can go Patong. Patong is a shit. Like, yeah. go, um, oh man, so many things to do, so many people to see. And, and and what I love about it, it's westernized, and you get all these people coming in constantly. It's a tourist island, so yeah. It's How long dope. did you stay in Thailand for? I've been back and forth. I've been maybe three times now, but I've been back. Uh, every time I go, I'm like a week, two weeks. But yeah, it's fun. It's China's, a good time. China's cool, right? China's cool as well. I, I work there as well. I fight for a big company over there. So yeah, I China's cool, but it's not nothing like Phuket. But when I'm in China, mostly I'm in the hotel. Go, they make you do all these, you know, pre-fight stuff, right, 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 the pageantry. And after that, fight, get my money, and I'm out. So how do we make these guys, these glory guys, stars here in America where it's, it's as big as it is over there? What do we got to do? Like in China, it's a different thing. They they, they, they really know how to produce and, and market their guys and push them. Like for me, when I moved to China, I moved to China, I quit my job uh, 2013. I went through a, the Great Depression. You know, everything was going to shit. And I just decided, nah, I'm out. So I fucked off to China. I quit my job September 4th, 2013. The next day I was on a plane back to China and I stayed there for maybe till April. Then oh, but in July, March, I got the call to fight for Leap. To, I got signed to Glory. So I was like, no, nah, I got to get back home. And I went back home, fought in Glory, lost. And then that was it. Never worked again. But in China, um, yeah, I, was, I wasn't going there f- for them to make me look good. I was going there to, for their guys to beat on, you know what I mean? But the way my plans worked, I was like, nah, fuck that. So I whooped all their guys. I beat some of them twice even. You went like 18 and 1 after Berlin or something. Yeah. No, no, no. before. In China, I went, Simon Marcus was my first loss. I went 40 and 0 before I fought him. But I think the judges were a little blind, so they didn't really see what the fight well, was about. That's a good rematch, yeah. man, regardless. Oh, bro, I'm, I win this fight, I'm calling them out. Right? I'm, bringing, I'm, I'm, br- I'm bringing them up on stage. I want that fight because I want to get that off. Every time I get a rematch, I get better. Like these guys, they, they're the same. You know what I mean? Philippe, I fought him. You know, Turkey, he beat me. Good basics, you know, like really good basics, and he beat me. And on paper, I look at that, and I'm like, yo, if I was watching this fight, he beat me. I'm objective. Simon Marcus, Alex Pereira, they didn't beat me. If I watched that fight and I'm objective, you know. Was your fight with Simon extra round? Yeah. Extra I beat round? him after the first three. And they're like, okay, extra round. I'm like, all right, all right, cool. And I still beat him in the extra round. And then I didn't get the win. You know, he went on. It was a four-man tournament, so he went on to win it. And I was like, all right, whatever. That's, that's what, what makes that fight exciting, man, yeah. because it's like 
if you do what do they call it like MMA math, mm-hmm. where it's like Ma- right, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. They said, you lost to Simon, yeah, but then Willness knocked out Simon, yeah. So it kind of put you in paper. That like, should lose to Will. It underdog, doesn't work right? that way. But I still, I mean, I've accepted it. Like, okay, he beat me on paper, yes. But if I look at that fight objectively, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't, I'm not just biased against myself. I beat him. You know, I touched him way more than he touched me twice that whole fight, twice. I just kept on hitting. Him. I was moonwalking and hitting him the whole time because he was he was coming forward and I'm off to the side. So if you win this fight, you'll call him out. Yeah, I want Simon. I want Simon Marcus. I want to do it in Canada as well. I want to do it in Toronto. I haven't been yet, so I want to do it in Canada. My hometown, yeah, man. definitely. I want to come through, make it happen. Now, I think you so. uh, you knocked out eight straight guys, mm. and then your next eight fights, you have one knockout. Your yeah. last eight. My uh, let Roughly. me see. Oh, MMA. Oh, I've been fighting MMA as well, so I'm nine just, and nine. Just kickboxing. Yeah, but kickboxing. Let me see. Is that, is that by choice? You, you stretch mm. these things out? You're not going for knockouts? Just no, actually, no. I, I knocked out, um, what's his name? Yeah, uh, Stoika. Stoika. Um, who else have I knocked? Yeah. Well, I knocked out in kickboxing before that. I'm trying to think. Uh, I have to go back now. Who have I knocked out in kickboxing? I'm sure it's more than one. It might be like six and two, maybe. So two knockouts or three. But if I have to look back into it and see. But um, it's not by choice. I always go there and go for the finish. I never really like... You know, I'm just going to coast. I've never been that guy. I just know this is the game. I want to touch the guy, and he can't handle what I'm doing. And eventually, he's going to fall. So I'm not trying to, like, just play and touch, touch, and, oh, yeah, I get my hand raised. Nah, I've never been about that well, life. Well, is Willness dangerous enough that if you get him in trouble, you got to go for the finish? No. Nah. Like, around? you see, I just, I don't, if, if I don't go looking for the finish, you let it come to you. Because if you go looking for it, that's when you, you fuck up like Marcus did against him. You know, he hurt him. In the first round, Markham beasted him. You know, he, he fucked him up. But, um, yeah, he just played a stupid game and then got gassed out in the first round and then let Jason get his momentum. And then he realized, I'm fucked, I'm tired. And he thought, oh, I can just play with him and just, you know, roll yeah, around. And yeah, started looking good, man. He started yeah. off with a little bit of, like, 50-50, not getting it. And then he caught some momentum, man. Yeah. So I think he's got a lot Don't give of- him the momentum. That's the thing. And Marcus decided to let him have the momentum. So that was on that was on Marcus. What did you take on Simon with that head movement? I think he did well. He did all right, but he just he wasn't doing it. I think it's something new to him. Like example, when I fought um another Canadian, uh, Robert Thomas, three days before the fight, my coach realized in his last fight, like yo, he's not really coming forward like a you know plotting Muay Thai style. He's starting to have a little bit more head movement, and then he might have a boxing coach. All right, we're gonna do this instead, and then backstage we see him with this boxing coach, and we're like ah, we knew it. Oh, you're coming yeah. after us Canadians, man. What's yeah. going on? Nah, nothing. I'm coming after the whole world, yeah, man. Yeah, then you want to do it in Toronto, yeah, too. Yeah, I'm doing it's the whole world. The whole world's getting it, man. It's me. New Zealand versus the whole world. Too, Nigeria you versus kill, the whole world. You killed Napoleon in France, right? Yeah. That's where you get him. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's what you got to do. So I want to go. I want to do it in his hometown. So, Because uh, also, I want to. I haven't been to Canada yet. So I want to see what... You, know, you guys are nice. I like Canada, nice Canadians. Yeah, they are. Nice yeah, yeah, definitely. Toronto's my favorite city. It's Straight. T-Dot. They call uh, it T-Dot, Joe. T-Dot, is that the spot? Six. Yeah. Is that the, oh, is that the six? six? Yeah. Running through, I want to run through the six. The yeah. whole six. Where's, that, where's, my six my where's, the, where's that version in Nigeria? I know you're from Nigeria. Where's Lagos. the hot spot? Lagos City is where the hot spot is. That's where Ikoi Club or like Ikoi Island, you know? That's the, that's the spot where... Uh, the posh people yeah. go, you know what do you I mean? Feel, do you feel in danger when you're down there? Or is it safe? Nah, I feel good, but they can smell it on me, man. Like, even if I, when I go back, I don't wear no, like, I just, I can dress like this if I want to, but in certain areas, you don't want to, I don't want to draw attention to myself. So I dress quite like jandals, shorts, and a t-shirt, but they look at you and somehow they can just smell it, like, market people can just smell like, you know, he's not, he's not from here, you know what I mean? Then they start to like, <laughs> they raise the prices guy. on everything, yeah. on everything. So I have my cousins with me and they're like, oh, Get from here now. What's going happen? You want to put chop? Nah, 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 no sweat. They bring it down. Bargain, bargain. And yeah, it's good. I love being back home. Yeah, so you, I know you, uh, this fight is going to be airing on in Nigeria. On yeah, television. definitely. That's yeah. important to you. What, what is your message to the Nigerian fans? So, ah, uh, can I chop pigeon English now? Um, yeah, they love me. They love me. So I want to show the love back. Um, I feel like this is, I want to do what Manny Pacquiao did to the Philippines. Like when he fights there, he shuts it down. And I, I was, I kept on saying 50 million, like, oh, you know, we've got 50 million people, you know. And then I looked up yesterday, it's 180 million and counting. So in that's Nigeria. a lot. Yeah, in Nigeria. So that's a lot of people. So, I mean, if I can have them ride for me and realize, even if they don't, they don't mess with kickboxing, they have a lot of boxers, but not really kickboxing. But if I can get them on my side and just, like the way Connor did with, you know, with Ireland and MMA, 
So you ain't get a big following. Then that's 180 million or even 100 you, million. We're gonna get you a parade if you win the title. So Definitely. Right. Oh, bro, I'm going back. I'm I want to take it. Fl- yeah, fuck We gotta yeah. send a cameraman over there. Definitely for easy. Real. Yeah. If they, if they get awesome, it done, awesome like a that. private jet, fly me through. Woo. Let's go. I want to do it down the hall of like me and Lakers. Yeah. Definitely, man, yeah. 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 Definite, man yeah. bro. I look after you guys there. I'll be your hype man. I'll be like, here off the chair. Yeah. My towel. I'll be swinging my towel. I like that. That's ready, man. Yeah. Make it a whole carnival. Yeah. Well, hey, man. Thanks for being on the show. It's fun. Right. Nah, it's easy, man. You know. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's my first. I think my first American podcast. Yeah. yeah. How'd so you feel? Good. good. Okay. Relax. Yeah, I'm rehydrating right now. We have a program, so. Yeah. What would you do over? If we could redo this podcast. Looking back. What, what was, do you mean? If you could do one part of this podcast over, we're trying to evaluate mm, your let performance me see. here today. Me, if I could do anything. Uh, maybe got long winded in a couple spots. Maybe I would have had maybe two shots. <laughs> Jack Daniels before it. Yeah. Because sometimes I, I just, it gets me loose. It's not yeah. like to get drunk, but just even smelling like Jack Daniels or something would just kind of let my brain know, like, oh, we're about to do this. You ever had and to have a fight just, drunk before? Yeah. Where you're like drinking, like, hey, you're no, up next, buddy. I've, not not yet. I always wanted to do not it. Yet. I've sparred drunk. Don't start tomorrow nah. night. Nah, <laughs> <Nah, laughs> fuck no. Don't get drunk. I can like bring, bring the drunken fist. fist. I can so bring the drunken fist. How you celebrate, man? You, if you win this yeah. title. When I win this title. When, yeah? Yeah. What do you celebrate? You drinking? You going out? You eating? Because my family's family. here, so I think fam. We'll, we'll sit down in a restaurant, have a few, nice. eat. I want to, because in LA, I want to I wanna have, yeah, some, some nice, maybe, what do you call it? What's the thing we stuffed the duck? I've always, Fagua, Fagua. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I've heard that's really good. Nah, nah, fog You stuff the duck with like all this shit, and then they cut it, and it's just it's like stuffed duck, fog oh, So I want to try some of that or anything like a good restaurant out here and just well, yeah, have a few. I fought in and out, animal style. Yeah, definite yeah. man. I love it. Five cheese guys though. Out. Five guys is life. I mean, in and out and five. Yeah, I love in and out, but five guys. Yeah, when I was in, when I was not, bro. Chick Fil A. Can we agree? Chick Fil A is better than anything. I haven't been. I've been. I've been, but I don't. Nah, five guys. Right now, five guys is the one. I mean, you folk, I didn't, ah, oh, so good. Right now, I might have it tonight, man. Todd went to in and out <laughs> He went to in and out He had a uh, a double-double cheeseburger. Yeah, that's what I had as well. Pepper. Animal style. You got to ask for animal style. That's animal styles to get the fuck out. What did they do? Put fries on it? It's like some no, it's like onions. onions and like just sauce. And it's just, it looks sexy. It just yeah. looks sexy. Yeah. That's yeah. just what, what it had is. Two burgers. Had, of course, I had two burgers, man. We can go back. Animal style thing. fries as well. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Just the, the regular tub. fries I didn't like. Nah. Animal style, yeah. way better. Put yeah. cheese on it, and then the, the onions, and then the sauce. You want it yeah. with the sauce, and then do the, the little, little sprinkle, thing on it. Eh? sprinkle, the sprinkle, <laughs> yeah. sprinkle on I it, man. I love that, definite. Man. I saw yeah. uh, it was on Instagram. He was doing that little sprinkle, and yeah. someone put like an aquarium underneath, and all oh, the fish the, were yeah. coming up. <laughs> I was yeah. dying. Yeah, we gotta make one. Mm. Maybe we should get that guy on the podcast. So. <laughs> we'll go back to Turkey, maybe. Yeah, right. <laughs> he, yeah, he's, he's, he um, he trains as well. I seen on his Instagram. He um, he, he got some hands. He can work. Yeah, <laughs> he's on his Instagram. He's not great, but for I was like, wow, right, he's all right. He works. Yeah. Yeah, he can box. He can kick. And he can sprinkle. Good yeah, luck, sprinkle. Uh, Friday night, brother. We're pulling for My you. Man, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I think Glory can't needs me. Like everyone keeps saying, like you know, he's got the biggest fan base. But I honestly think like I'm the one bringing the eyes to this. You know, I don't think he has. No one wants to see. He doesn't. He, like he's very. He's a quiet guy. He's cool. He just chills. But I don't think he's gonna be the guy that brings kickboxing to the next level. I feel I'm the guy. So. And you've got your post-fight speech in the ring planned mm-hmm. out. You're ready. Nah, I'm just ready to rap. Yeah, I don't. I don't like you. You saw it because you were asking me. You know, you ready? You ready? I'm like, nah, you don't need that. Just go in there and be honest. And I just want to let the people of Denver know, like, yo, I appreciate the way you guys were. And even people were like, yo, I like yeah. the way you were so honest in that post-fight speech. Yeah, like, you, guys, you treated me well. Man. Exactly. Thanks, man. You know, yeah. so people know they'll give the. You know, I want to thank God and. uh yeah, well, you know, we were hoping to win, and yeah, you know, yeah, it was a good fight. And then crickets, yeah. all that stuff, yeah. <laughs> but I, I just, I'm just honest. So when I win, I'm just gonna call out Simon Marcus because he knows he owes me that rematch. You, you guys need to get this picture, done. Though, like you guys were all no, boys I'm cool with him. We're, and like, I told him, no, like I told him, like I was like, yo, you know, I'm gonna get like, this. I said, you're done. I no. need the tension. You're not, no, we, no, we. It's, there's no like tension that. between us. I, can, I mean, I still roast him. I told him you're gonna get this whooping. You don't think he's gonna turn it down? Why would he turn it down? Nah, fuck no. He told me, you know, like definite. Yeah, yeah, definite, man. Nah, he knows. Because his last fight, he broke um someone's arm in Colorado, and then he won some a big fight in China as well. So he's on a roll. I'm like, look, you're doing well. I'm going to win this title. Let's get this done in Toronto. Here's what you do. You call him in the ring and you say, hey. That's what we're doing. Do you want the title? Because of course you do. Say, beg me, boy. 
Beg me. Get on your knees. <laughs> Get on your knees. knees. Now, that's what I'm talking about. You know <laughs> what, man? Because it's the same question. You ask any fighter, and I was probably the same way. You ask me, who do you want to fight next? Oh, whoever mm. they put me against. That's that the bullshit. You know what? I think... you got to have a plan. This, man, stars aren't made when you, by performance. You know what I mean? Everyone can knock everyone out. You have a good performance right away. Right stars are made what you say right after you knock someone out on the mic. You have to just make sure... That's how you make... The, the hype for the next fight. And it's not like you're trying to generate it because I keep saying, everyone's like, oh, the UFC's like the new WWE. <laughs> I'll tell you this, I'll leave you guys with this. Fight hype has been part of fighting since day one. In my high school, if two kids had beef, you know, and they're like, you know, fuck you, cunt. Yeah, what, what? After school, cunt. Yeah, all right, cool. From that time till after school, all everyone's doing is talking about what, what the fight It's just like, and if they see each other, it might almost get down and you teach, break it up, break it up, break it up. And everyone's just like, oh shit, it's gonna go down. Oh, Leon's gonna win. Oh, oh Levi's gonna win. Rah, 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 rah. And then after school, everyone rushes to where the fight's gonna happen. And then you see them walk from opposite ends. And it's like, oh shit, oh shit. And then it's the anticipation. Sometimes it's a great fight. And sometimes it's like they just hold each other because no one knew jiu jitsu. And, right? and then guys like, and like yeah, him hit him back. Back. And then they're like, yeah, Todd's that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah get him. Yeah, yeah, he's got He's the yeah, odds maker. Yeah. But sometimes, I mean, like, it. it's always been part of fighting. Like, fight hype has just always been part of fighting. It's just, been, it's just, it's part of it. What the WWE did is hijack that and just, like, I guess they... Take it to a new level. Yeah, man. they took it to a new level. And then people thought, oh, it's fake because it's fake wrestling, right, right, right. No, fight hype's just always been part of fighting. It's just, it's just the way it is. So if you want to, if you want to get this done, you know, you have to just call the right guys out, make the right fights for you, and just call your shots. Don't let anyone dictate your destiny for you and say, oh, whoever, not, whoever the UFC or whoever Glory puts in front of me, I'll fight. Why don't you call out the, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels or I'll give him man. sweet, you see sweet chin, sweet, wait a minute, sweet chin music tomorrow. Okay. Shawn Michaels will get it, man. You, you know Todd worked for WWE for eight Did years. You? What? How? I called SmackDown for five years. Worked That's there. right. Yeah. That's where I knew you from. And he had the glasses, oh, though. Oh, yes. Oh, shit. Though. Flashback. Yeah. That was our family time back in the day. It was Fair Factor <laughs> and WWE. Well, people don't they think family time. Straight up. No, straight up. Like, we, no, we used to just watch wrestling. Yeah. And that was like, well, yeah. I, I, I gave up. That was I was in the uh, the Attitude Era. That was me. Yeah. But now I look at these guys and I don't, I'm like, what? What are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's watered down a little bit now, but the yeah. It's PG rating. Now I remember you. Holy shit. Yeah, the glasses. Yeah, glasses look like Clark yeah. Kent back then. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. And now look at me, a blossom into a beautiful woman. <laughs> Flower. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing oh, Joe's tight ass pants. Yeah, yeah. Those little nut man. huggers. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to change your shoes and your shirt a little bit, but it's okay. I guess. We'll no, you're all right. Yeah. Joe's always clean. I'm clean. You know, I'm not even trying, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Rocky Marciano shirt's not good enough. It's a little baggy. That's something. Mm, around the neck, it's loose. You don't want that. You want it to be not tight, but fitted. No, it's fitted. How's John looking here? John looks slick. I like his style. New York. The shoes. Oh, don't you? I see you. I see you, man. John O'Regan is wearing a New York Yankees jersey with his own name on the back. <laughs> My man. Is, which represent. I think we all can agree it's pretty damn cool. Definitely. Represent. Yeah. Rep yourself, man. Talking a little BMG, though. Yeah, nice shoes, nice socks. Yeah. Nice socks. You got... You got Todd's got short Reebok socks on, <laughs> where John's got like nice designer, like European socks. Yeah. So we're trying he's got to Liz Playboard on. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right, that's enough. We gotta get out of here, man. All right, I gotta go sleep. He's gotta drink some some uh, shots. Rehydrate. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. drunken Jacks. master. Watch out for it. Watch out for it. Well, look forward to hearing what you have to say uh, in the after ring after you win. Yeah, they're gonna get if it. It happens. Oh, it will happen. Definitely. In my world, it happens. All right. Style bender. Peace out. Joe, I think our sponsor, what are we supposed to do now with the sponsorship? Uh, I think it's uh, GloryShop.com, right? Yeah, we've got some fresh gear out there. Do we? Looks good. We're looking good. Those snapback hats are looking really nice. Yeah. We've got some nice Glory shirts and gear coming out, so make sure you check online. Yeah, I heard Nadim has a bunch for us in his room. But he so. never seems to get brought down from the room. I've noticed that. It's like, hey, the dean has got a big old suitcase for you guys. I'm like, great. Yeah, I can't and wait for my, my welcome glory package <laughs> that, that I never received. That damn suitcase has been in this room for like seven days. <laughs> I'm like, bro, feel free to bring it down. We can help you. A lot of strong guys around here. Anyway. All right. Hey, coming up next, by the way, uh, we're headed to Chicago for Glory 38 uh, Super Fight Series as well as Glory. So if you're in the Chicago area, it'll be, I believe, February 24th. So uh, get tickets, AXS.com. Some here. good fights. You know, the headliner on that one, you have uh, newly crowned champ, Artem Vahita versus uh, Saulo Cavallari in a wicked rematch. Richard Abraham versus um, Pinto 
Alunga, Machado, you have Zerbalev, Moikasa, like it's stacked. And my boy Richard Abraham fighting in his hometown. He's in Thailand right now. Yeah. He's really putting it down, really taking Pinto yeah. very serious. The thing I love most about Richard Abraham, he, when he has his post-fight wins, he doesn't go to the club. He sends his wife to Taco Bell. And he ate, like, seriously, like, six burritos, six soft he tacos. Eating that guy. He was unbelievable. He was just in, like a pig in mud. Yeah, I'm following him on Snapchat, and he just walks down Thailand. He's like, look at this wicked drink I got for, like, 50 cents. And he just, he loves the whole deal now. He's loving it. Yeah, man. Well, but, yeah, Pinto's a big challenge. This guy's, he, I think we talked today, he has over, he's maybe 20, in his mid-20s. He has 180 fights. His, his first record. fight was when he was 11 years old. Yeah. And it has 180 fights. I told him, I was like, man, I had an active year. I fought like four times this year. He's like, bro, I fight four times in a week. Like, he's like, <laughs> I'm like, to be that age and to have 180 fights is insane. That's crazy. All right, man. Are we done? We have anything else to make us say? I'm pretty good. All right, man. Well, it was fun. All right. Well, yeah, done. Thanks to Israel and uh, everybody else. John O'Regan, our uh, super sexy producer, Nadim, who's running the uh, computer. Does he, does he really do anything? Or you just turn it on and walk away? What the hell? He, he keeps his finger on the mouse track. You know what he's, he's doing? Back. He's tapping that Tinder button. That's all he's doing over there. Yeah. Yeah, I know what he's doing. All right. Tinder we'll see you guys in the fights. Glory 36, Friday night, LA Live, UFC Fight Pass. 37, sorry, Glory 37. Uh, UFC Fight Pass, ESPN 3, and then it re airs Sunday on ESPN 2. Yeah, everyone's got to come in and watch me and you. Yep. Maybe Israel, too. <laughs> All right, go put, lo go put lotion on your face. You're getting dry. Yeah. All right, see you guys.